Well, there are a few closer friendships than the one between our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, and her landlady, Mrs. Margaret Davis. They share each other's joys and sorrows, problems and secrets. And one cat named Minerva. <laughs> Last Thursday, this black beauty of the feline world was anticipating a blessed event. Hence, since 6.30 in the morning, we had been at the vet's, where an over-anxious Mrs. Davis had insisted on bringing Minerva. By we, I mean Mrs. Davis and me, and our neighbor's cat, Timothy. <laughs> two hours. We've been waiting almost two hours. What's taking Dr. Anderson so long? Please, Mrs. Davis, try to calm down. Even Timothy isn't as jumpy as you are. <laughs> You're as nervous as a cat. Meow. <laughs> what is he doing here? Well, why shouldn't he be here? He's Minerva's husband. <laughs> Very nice of him to take such an interest. Now, Dr. Anderson said he'd ring in here when he was ready, so why not sit down and take it easy? How about reading something? Well, all right. Hand me a magazine, Connie. Which one do you want? It doesn't make much difference. The one you're chewing on will be fine. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm just a wee bit nervous myself. Now sit down, Mrs. Davis. Very well. Uh, at least these chairs are nice and soft. Now where did Timothy go? You're sitting on him. <laughs> Boy, that cat can sleep through anything. This is no time for kidding, Connie. What's taking so long? Do you think everything's all right? Oh, of course, Mrs. Davis. A normal litter is five kittens. And Dr. Anderson said Minerva might have even more. Yeah! I'm just quoting the doctor, Timothy. <laughs> I hope nothing happens to Minerva. That kitty means a lot to me. She means a lot to both of us. Yeah. Correction. She means a lot to the three of us. <laughs> what a wonderful companion she's always been. Especially when I was alone. Night after night, she used to sit at my feet with her ball of yarn, and I'd read aloud to her by the hour. I guess you must have distracted her. In all that time, she never knitted one sweater. <laughs> Remember the cute little thing she used to do in the morning? How she used to jump up on the dining room table when I brought your cereal. I certainly do remember. That cat could lap the milk from under my cracklies before they stopped firing. <laughs> I can't help feeling something's wrong. Oh, Minerva. Dear Minerva, don't leave me. Oh, look, Mrs. Davis. Not only is Minerva not going to leave you... But in a few minutes, she'll present you with so many little Minervas, you won't know what to do with them. That will be a problem, won't it? Yes. We can't possibly keep all of them here in our place. Not unless we marry the milkman. <laughs> I know a lady in my sewing circle who'd take two of them. She's crazy about kittens. Which lady is that? Mrs. Katz. <laughs> but you'll have to help me dispose of the rest, Connie. Perhaps somebody at Madison would help us out. Maybe Mr. Boynton would want a pet. If he did, I wouldn't be single now. <laughs> well, we have crossed that bridge. The signal. Dr. Anderson finished. I'll be right back, Connie. Wait for me. Well, <clears throat> only a few minutes more, Timothy, and you'll know how large a family you've got. I hope for the children's sake they look like Minerva. Meow! Well, anyway, the girls... <laughs> But perhaps I'm jumping the gun. Until we get Mrs. Davis's report, there's no sense in conjecturing. Connie, Connie, guess what? I'm a father. <laughs> At least Timothy is. You hear that, Tim? You're a father. Meow. Of eight cuddly kittens. Meow. <laughs> Good morning, Walter. Greetings, elegant educator. And how is Madison's most sparkling and effervescent personality today? She stopped fizzing an hour ago. I noticed Mrs. Davis dropped you off. 
How come you didn't avail yourself of the Denton delivery service today? It was sort of an emergency, Walter. I had to visit the veterinarian with Mrs. Davis. Really? Oh, I hope you didn't find anything wrong with her. <laughs> well, don't you get it? You said you were going to a vet with Mrs. Davis, and I said... I know what you said, Walter. And I'm willing to forget it if you are. <laughs> Actually, Mrs. Davis became a grandmother today. A grandmother? No fooling. What did he weigh? About a quarter of a pound each. That's two pounds altogether. Eight times a quarter of a pound. You're not reaching me, Miss Brooks. <laughs> it was Minerva, Walter. It's like this. Minerva... Oh, what's the use? You're old enough to have heard about the birds and bees, aren't you? Don't tell me Minerva gave birth to eight bees. <laughs> No, but the kittens she had aren't much bigger. Which brings us, by way of Passaic, to the subject at hand. What are Mrs. Davis and I going to do with eight kittens? Well, you should have thought of that before you... <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> now, please, Miss Brooks, if there's any way in which I can be of help... There to... is, Walter. You're fond of pets, aren't you? Oh, sure I am. Then it's settled. You can take two of the kittens home. Yeah, well, I'd like nothing better, but how do you think they'd get along with Wolf? Wolf? Yeah, my father's police dog. He's awfully vicious. Only listens to my father. He's what they call a one-man dog. That's enough of a meal for any dog. <laughs> Don't you keep him muzzled? Well, my parents tried that, but he chewed through four of them. And muzzled, not parents. <laughs> and then, too, we've got to consider Wolf's pal. Who's his pal? A mongoose? No, no, but almost as bad. My dad thought it would calm him down if he had a companion, so he brought home a pretty bloodthirsty bulldog the other night. Now, all in all, I don't think our house is the spot for a kitten. It doesn't sound like any Shangri-La. <laughs> hey, I've got an idea. Why don't you try Mr. Boynton? I'd love to. I mean... <laughs> that's my next stop. I hope you don't mind my dropping in on you before class, Mr. Boynton. Not at all, Miss Brooks. It's nice to have you visit my lab occasionally. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me for a moment while I finish feeding these rabbits. Go right ahead. I bet you've never seen anyone fed with an eyedropper before. Not since the last time you treated for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never have, Mr. Boynton. Now open your mouth. Wider. Come on, wider still. I don't want it like gone. Please, Miss Brooks, they won't eat when you're clowning like that. It'll just take another minute. Well, if I'm disturbing you, Mr. Boynton... No, 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 you're not disturbing me at all, Miss Brooks. That's one thing about you. When you're in the lab with me, I can always concentrate perfectly on whatever else I'm doing. <laughs> That's what I get for buying a perfume called... Ah! <laughs> there. Now, I'm finished. Now, what was it you wanted to see me about? Well, to begin at the beginning, Mr. Boynton, I went to the vets this morning with Mrs. Davis. Really? I hope he didn't find anything wrong with her. <laughs> I can get off a good one myself once in a while, eh, Miss Brooks? You got off that one too soon. It hasn't hatched yet. <laughs> we went to the vet because of Mrs. Davis's cat, Minerva. What happened to her? What happened to her also happens to a dog. She had eight puppies. A kitten. <laughs> good grief. What are you going to do with eight kittens? Now, that's what I call a leading question, Mr. Boynton. Since you're so fond of pets, it gives me great pleasure to offer you any two of the kittens you want. Well, I'd love to take a couple of them, Miss Brooks. Good, then it's settled. As soon as they can leave their you mother, You didn't I'll... let me finish. I I'd love to take them, but I can't. Why not? Have you got a bloodthirsty bulldog, too? <laughs> no, but there's my pet frog, McDougal. He's allergic to cats. Well, I'm allergic to McDougal. <laughs> <laughs> you stay out of this, Mac. Besides, a kitten requires more attention than a frog. I'm hardly ever in my apartment, Miss Brooks, and, well, as much as I'd like to help you out, it just simmers down to the simple question, 
what can a bachelor do? Ooh, hoo, hoo. Have I got an answer for that one? <laughs> I couldn't find a home for any of Minerva's kittens. And by lunchtime, I had almost exhausted my list of prospects. That is, all except one, our beloved principal, Mr. Conklin. Mindful of the adage, you can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar, I decided to visit his web. I mean, I went to his office <laughs> at noon, bearing a large slab of his favorite dessert, banana cream pie. When Mr. Conklin saw me in his doorway, his reaction was one of pure delight. Please, Miss Brooks, whatever you were going to do with that pie, don't do it. <laughs> but, Mr. Conklin, I... I know you've been under a strain lately, but I've just had this suit cleaned. And it's such a gooey pie. <laughs> but, sir, I was just going to let you have it. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. Here, I'll just set it down on your desk near the chair. Yeah. <clears throat> there. See, I didn't get any on you at all. I'm not out of the woods yet. <laughs> you will probably jump into my lap after you leave. Now, what, may I ask, is the reason behind this sacrificial offering? It's merely a slight expression of my esteem for a good and kind principal. If it's all the same to you, I feel safer when I'm crabby, mean old marblehead. <laughs> now, what do you want, Miss Brooks? Want? Hmm. Well, surely I can make a nice gesture toward you without wanting something, can't I? Well, I suppose so. That's better. Now, here's what I want. <laughs> you see, sir, Mrs. Davis and I had to go to the vets this morning. Really? I hope he didn't find anything wrong with you. <laughs> well, at least it's a switch. <laughs> I hope he didn't find anything wrong with you. <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> I've had it. <laughs> well, look, Mr. Conklin, we went to the vet because our cat Minerva had a litter this morning. Oh, congratulations. Uh, was it a preponderance of boys or girls? Oh, we don't know yet, but they're eight of the cutest kittens you ever saw. Minerva's so proud. Indeed. Remind me to drop her a card on Mother's Day. <laughs> now, uh, tell me, Miss Brooks, what in heaven's name are you going to do with eight kittens? That's just the question I needed here. Mr. Conklin, we can't possibly keep all those kittens, so I thought you and Mrs. Conklin might take a couple off our hands. You thought what? For your information, Miss Brooks, my home is not now, nor will it ever be, a depot for stray felines. I am definitely anti-cat. But, Mr. Compton... And just... even if I weren't, you have chosen the worst possible time to bring up the subject of household pets. Only last month, I got rid of a gigantic police dog. A police dog? My wife had taken a fancy to the brute. Why, for weeks, she spent every evening with him in our living room. Where did you spend yours? On top of the piano. <laughs> what a vicious beast he was. Even his name made me nervous. Wolf. Wolf? But I know a wolf. There's Keep your private affairs to yourself. <laughs> the, uh, the only reason I permitted the animal to enter my house was because of my wife. Someone told her the previous owner had been mean to the creature, and that's all she needed. My wife falls for every sob story she hears about animals. She must be awfully tender-headed, hearted. <laughs> uh, she is indeed. In the last few years, we've had a steady procession of parrots, canaries, goldfish, monkeys, and dogs. Why, we even harbored a small deer at one time. A deer? How did she happen to take that? Well, someone told her he'd sprained his ankle falling out of a tree. <laughs> Uh, but uh, to get back to the latest monster, I got rid of Wolf by presenting him to the father of one of my pet peeves, Walter Denton. Yes, I know. Sometimes I can picture them both in the backyard together, and I conjure up a rather delightful vision. 
A vision wherein one of them slips his leash and they clash. <laughs> ah, but enough of the animal world. You'll have to work out some oh, other means. Oh, excuse me, Daddy, but it's important. Oh, what is it, Harriet? The school custodian wants to see you right away. One of the furnace pipes is leaking. Uh, Harriet, and... don't get so close to the desk. But he says it's urgent, Daddy. And... Watch out for that pie. Oh! Uh... Oh, there's no damage, sir. Luckily, it fell on this old rag on the chair. That uh, old rag happens to be my top coat. <laughs> I knew you'd get me sooner or later. But it wasn't Miss Brooks' fault, Daddy. She just... Quiet, collaborator. <laughs> Now, oh, come on. Lead me to the trouble spot. You stay here and take any incoming phone calls, Miss Brooks. But, sir, what about my lunch? It's... You'll find a delicious piece of banana pie on the second button of that coat. <laughs> I do everything in this school with my own two hands. It doesn't get done at all. I have to do everything in this school with my own two hands. It doesn't get... What a sour ball. <laughs> really? Oh, well, we can't all be... Hello? Sour ball's office? Uh, Mrs. Davis? Is that you, Connie? Yes, Mrs. Davis? That's right, dear. I haven't been able to find a home for any of the kittens yet. Me either, Mrs. Davis, but I think I've got an idea. Good. Oh, before you tell me what it is, Connie, the funniest thing happened when I spoke to the chairwoman of the ladies' aid about our dilemma. What was it? Well, first I said... I went to the vets this morning with Connie Brooks, and then she said... Really? really? I, I hope he didn't find anything, anything wrong with her. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we've completed the cycle. But, Mrs. Davis, through Mr. Conklin, I think I've picked up a clue that may solve our problem. That is, if Walter and Harriet and Mr. Boynton cooperate. Now, here's the scheme. You bring Minerva and the kittens down to the side entrance of Madison right after school. Mr. Conklin isn't back from school yet, Miss Brooks, but you can wait for him right here in his study. Thanks, Mrs. Conklin. I'll just put this basket down. Uh, there. It's pretty heavy. It looks like a laundry basket with a pillow slip over it. That's what it is, a laundry basket with a pillow slip over it. I see. <laughs> Going to drop it off on your way home? I wish I could. No, I'm afraid it's not as simple as that. I don't understand. What's in the basket? In the basket? Oh, nothing much. Nothing worth meowing about. <laughs> I say nothing worth meowing about. Meow. <laughs> Let me see that basket. Why, why, there's a cat in here. And a kitten. And another kitten. And another kitten. Keep going. I'll wait. <laughs> Whose cat is this, Miss Brooks? She belongs to someone who lives very close to us, Mrs. Conklin, but I'd rather not burden you with a whole heartbreaking and pathetic story. What story? No, Mrs. Conklin, you've got enough troubles of your own. Oh, please, Miss Brooks. What troubles have I got? There's just Mr. Conklin to look after. See and... what I mean? <laughs> no, I wouldn't want you to know that the neighbor to whom these little creatures belong used to beat their mother every day. He used to beat her? Not only that, but he made her work for him. Every night when he cleaned out his furnace, he tied a cart to her and made her haul the ashes outside. <laughs> that cat worked like a dog, Mrs. Conklin. <laughs> how terrible. But, but how did she manage to have these kittens? They look like they were just born. It was her first day off in a month. <laughs> That's why I picked them up out of the driveway where he left them. Oh, how could anyone be so cruel? He practices a lot. <laughs> I asked Mrs. Davis if we might keep them, but our place is so small, it's out of the question. But what are you going to do with them? Return them to our neighbor, I guess. At least they'll be fed while they're getting beaten. <laughs> oh, I, I'd give anything if I could keep them here. It's a deal. <laughs> Well, I'm, a, I'm afraid Mr. Conklin wouldn't stand for it. Not after the experience he went through with our police dog, Wolf. Honestly, sometimes I think Mr. Conklin was jealous of him. Wolf probably barked louder. <laughs> there was only 
some way I could keep them. Oh, forget it, Mrs. Conklin. Why should you concern yourself over the horrible fate that's inevitable for these tiny little innocent kittens who've never harmed anyone? I'll just take them and return them. Wait, I will keep them. I'll just have to refrain from telling Osgood about it until he's in a really gay mood. They'll be old cats by then. <laughs> now, let's see if they're comfortable. Oh, they look a little cramped in that basket. I I'll just put this pillow slip on the desk and rest some of them on that. Come on, Kitty. Now you two. Meow. Now, don't you worry, Mama. I won't hurt your babies. I'll just put two more on the desk. And we'll all be more comfy, won't we? I feel better already. <laughs> oh, no. Quick, put the big cat in the basket behind the couch. Uh, be with you in a minute, dear. What about those kittens on the desk? I'll put them in these drawers. They're nice and roomy, thank goodness. There. There, now. Everything's out of sight. Keep your fingers crossed. As soon as they stop shaking... <laughs> well, dear, I've had quite a trying day at school. Good afternoon, Mr. Conklin. And I can see it hasn't ended. <laughs> uh, what are you doing here, Miss Brooks? Oh, uh, uh, I invited her over to have tea with us, Osgood. I, uh, I thought that would be nice. Tea? Where is the tea? It's in us. We couldn't wait. <laughs> no, we, uh, we felt a bit weak. We, we've all had a rather hard day, dear. Well, I'll go along with that. Now, if you'll both excuse me, I've got some things to do at my desk before dinner. Things to do? At your desk? Before dinner? You must be weak. It takes two of you to hold up one sentence. <laughs> but, Osgood, it isn't good for you to get to work as soon as you come home. You, you've been under a most grueling pressure for the past eight hours. Yes, indeed, sir. You have no idea how much that sitting around all day takes out of you. I mean, uh... Sitting around and making decisions is no cinch. Why, why don't you go into the living room and uh, sprawl out on the couch and take a nice nap? For about ten hours. <laughs> you know what the doctors say. There's nothing like a cat nap to make... Why don't I just shut up? <laughs> That's the best suggestion you've made in months. <laughs> now, please pardon me, but I've got to jot down some notes. Let's see, my pencils must be in this drawer here. Oh, dear, it's always so cluttered up. Better take this blotter out first. Then I'll remove these two furry black paperweights. <laughs> now this carbon paper can go. Oh, just as I thought. Here are my pencils right... <laughs> furry black paperweights? <laughs> Martha, what are these two kittens doing in the top drawer of my desk? You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Alfred, calm down. I, I can explain. Now, you might as well open the next drawer. The next drawer? There are two more kittens in here. Gad, the place is infested with them. Well, that's the way it goes, Mr. Conklin. Some desks have termites. Yours has kittens. <laughs> Now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Mr. Conklin soon put two and two together. Then I took the four of them and put them back in the basket with their mother. Even though I had told her a rather large fib, Mrs. Conklin was quick to forgive. After all, Osgood, Miss Brooks is only guilty of wanting to find a home for these eight helpless kittens. Granted. And I'll be more than happy to suspend her sentence if she will immediately collect her mewling mousers and march. <laughs> well, I guess there's nothing else I can do. Of course, Mrs. Conklin, I was hoping someone could keep them at least until they're old enough to be torn from their mother's side. Oh, I'd love to. Osgood, don't you think Not that... another word, Martha. In the month that Mastodon Wolf was under this roof, my nervous system had all the pet it could stand. Mother, Daddy, I'm home, and guess what? What? <laughs> That's what. Oh, Jack! He's back! Yes, Daddy. Wolf broke out of the Denton's backyard, and he's on our front porch this very minute. Well, what's he doing there? 
Well, when I left him, he'd just eaten up half the welcome mat. <laughs> oh, the poor dear. I hope it doesn't dull his fangs. <laughs> he just won't stay at the Denton's, Daddy. I think he wants to come back and live with us. I couldn't stand it. Not for another minute. You've got to get rid of him. Somebody's got to take him away. Mr. Conklin, I'll make you a proposition. If you'll let Mrs. Conklin keep the kittens here, I'll take Wolf home with me. What's that? If we keep the kittens, you'll remove that dinosaur from the premises? Yes, sir. What do you say? <laughs> here, kitty, nice kitty. Here, kitty. Then it's agreed. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Conklin, and thanks for everything. Good night, Miss Brooks, and thank you. Wolf, where are you, Wolf? Right over here, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Did I do a good job of barking? Oh, just perfect, Mr. Boynton. You were very convincing. Then they're going to keep the kitten. They certainly are. And now the least I can do is keep my end of the bargain. What do you mean, Miss Brooks? Come on, Wolf. We're going home. 